Hello and welcome to another Reaper Blog tutorial. Today we're looking at Ozone 8 and comparing it to Ozone 5, which I've been using for years and one of my favorite plugins, Awesome Bang for Buck, uh, just a great sounding processor. With the advanced version that I recently upgraded to, I get all of the Ozone modules as individual plugins. And for me, that was a big selling point. Uh, the upgrade cost was 140 US dollars. That's a pretty fair price, I think, to uh, jump up three levels with uh, the Ozone series. I've got the Dynamic EQ, the Multiband Dynamics Processor, the Equalizer, Exciter, Imager, Maximizer, Spectral Shaper, Vintage Compressor, Vintage EQ, Vintage Limiter, Vintage Tape, and the Tonal Balance Control. All as separate plugins so I can use them in mixing or I can use them in any order with uh, and as many instances and and just get a lot more out of it. So I, I think it was $140 to upgrade to Ozone 8 Advanced and it was $99 uh, for the standard version. So for me, that was a, you know, that was definitely worth it. So I would actually really like to talk about how Ozone 5 and Ozone 8 are different, but I know that there are very few people that have these two plugins or have version 5 still and haven't upgraded. Uh, that wouldn't help as many people as just focusing on what you can do in Ozone 8 Advanced. All right, so I'm going to remove Ozone 5. And one of the things that I wanted to focus on in this video is the master assistant function. I think it's a pretty cool thing and something that I would actually probably use in real projects. What it does is analyze the audio and then apply settings in multiple modules to get you a good starting point. And then you can add in other modules like uh, the tape module or the exciter, more creative effects uh, as needed. I'm gonna start this off with the default settings. So I'll play this a little bit so we can hear what this is. So we're going to take this section here and turn on uh, loop playback in Reaper. And then I'm going to hit this master assistant button. For this, I'm going to set it on the streaming mode, which is a more dynamic master. So um, if you just hover your mouse over it, it says it's going to be minus 14 LUFS. So next, and I'll play it. So it's given us a list of all the things that it's done here. It's analyzed the audio, set the equalizer to adjust the spectral balance. It's analyzed the dynamic range, decided no dynamic range processing is needed there. It set the maximizer threshold. Then it's analyzing what in the frequency range is actually triggering the limiter. And then it's put in a dynamic EQ to manage that, to make it more transparent. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, and that did that in a few seconds. So looking at first module, equalizer, a fairly big bump there, right around 1K, 2 dB. And let's see, minus one, taken off at 21 Hertz. Probably not necessary, but uh, you know, these other things, it, it does make a pretty big difference. Uh, dynamics module was bypassed. It went from a four band to just a two band. so something to process the subs versus everything else. And then the maximizer is at uh, minus one and minus four. Dynamic EQ, this is probably something that I wouldn't set um, or I wouldn't think to set in this way. Um, I typically use a dynamic EQ as something for finding resonant notes that just poke out too much, maybe sibilance control or something like that. This is set in a way that it makes the maximizer more transparent. It's pretty cool. So this maximizer is set to true peak, minus one ceiling, and minus four threshold. It's pushing up 4 dB of gain in there. Now we can listen to this level matched by using this gain match function 
on the I.O. section. So let's listen to this track now and have it bypassed and we'll bring it in after a couple bars. So it's definitely changed the balances there. Um, maybe in a good way, maybe in a bad way. The guitars are definitely more forward, and I think that's something that most people like. Um, the cymbals are less harsh. The low mids and the lows of the bass versus the guitars is uh, is improved. It's it's not sort of like muddy, dark. Now, I'd be interested to hear band three bypassed. I feel like that just that one EQ point makes most of the difference there. Okay, then let's uh, let's do a, this bypass test without the gain match, so you can hear that level change. Much easier to hear if you're making something better or worse when they're gain matched. And it, it's awesome that this is automatic. So as this says, this master assistant is just a starting point. Um, you can add in your creative effects like the vintage tape module, stick that after your EQ, and uh, add a little bit of color to this. So maybe set this to 50 nips, push the drive a little bit, and harmonics up. Add in the exciter module, Drag that to, I guess, drag it to before the dynamic EQ. And maybe set this to link bands. Set the mix to about 60%. Bring this up to about two or three. Let's give that a listen. I usually do something like that. There are all of these different modes that are new for me. Version 5 has the uh, retro tape, tube, and warm modes. So this also has an analog and two additional tube modes. And as well, you can change these different uh, modes per band, which is awesome. It's really flexible. All right, let's run Master Assistant on this other track. I'm going to uh, bypass this so we can hear it. All right, so there's the chorus, and uh, this song is one that I mixed in Mixing and Reaper Volume 3, uh, available now at reaperblog.net or mixingandreaper.com, and it's a really fun chorus. Just check it out. Master Assistant. I'm going to do the same thing, streaming, and hit play. I never saw myself right here. I'm always wanting to disappear. This time it decided I did need some dynamics control here, but otherwise it's pretty much the same as the last time. So the dynamics module is just two bands just to manage that low end. And that's something that I did a lot in my, um, my mastering of this song. EQ balance. Wow, it's pretty much flat except for the top and bottom, which is funny. It's interesting that it it decided that it needed a little bit of a low boost to then trim it down here. I don't know. <laughs> Dynamic EQ 
Again, these are settings that I probably wouldn't choose myself. Let's see if the, what it's actually doing. So it's pretty fast. It's 10 millisecond attack. It looks like it's only doing about one dB of a uh, gain reduction. And then maximizer ceiling at minus one, threshold at minus 4.6. Yeah, it's pretty standard. This is pretty much what I would do. Um, I think every time you use this, it goes with one of the classic modes. I'm not sure. Let's see. It looks like when you're using the master assistant, it's going to use the same limiter settings, you know, other than the threshold here. It is a starting point, and I think it sounds better. Let's listen to this bypassed and gain matched. There is very little change there that I'm hearing, which is cool. I mean, that means that my mix was pretty balanced. Or it means that this mix just doesn't work with this uh, this sort of analysis. I'm curious now. You can skip to the end of the video if you if you want, but I'm just going to um, run the master assistant again in a different section of the song and see if we get a different result. All right, so this time it says no dynamics needed or no dynamics processing needed. And how unsatisfying is it that that solo doesn't get to the end? So it's taking out the dynamics processor here. EQ, again, it's flat. <laughs> 0 0.1 at 1K. What the hell? It's pretty much the exact same settings. I guess these bands are a little bit different because there's that guitar solo going through. Let's hear this. Gain matched. Yeah, so all we're getting here is just a little bit of control, pushing down that solo, some of the notes maybe jumping out more than others. This dynamic EQ is handling that um, so that the limiter doesn't peak. But it looks like it didn't really do anything in the limiter. No, the limiter is basically doing nothing here, which is fine. It doesn't need to be cranked super loud. All right, guys, I uh, hope that was at least somewhat interesting for you. I find it a useful tool. I use it a lot in my mastering jobs along with other plugins, and you can see which plugins I use in my Mixing and Reaper series. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.